Welcome to Bronze Tax. Today is 11th of September and we are going to do an analysis of the US invasion and occupation of Afghanistan. The Americans have just recently pulled out of the peace talks with Taliban. But before we go into the consequences of that, let's see what the Americans have achieved in the last 18 years of this catastrophic blunder of their foreign policy. Almost a trillion dollars lost. They have, this is the most, not just it's the longest, one of the most expensive wars in the US history as well. The casualties in the battlefield are maybe five or 6,000 American troops, but that is not exactly the real figure. The American casualties through PTSD, post-traumatic <coughs> stress disorder, is staggeringly high. 23 veterans are committing suicide every day. Almost eight to nine, 10,000 American veterans are killing themselves because of the stresses of the wars like Iraq and Afghanistan. And what have the Americans achieved? Yes, the military industrial complex achieved a lot. As I say, the trillion dollars have been invested and spent. They've gone into the, they have gone to the weapons manufacturers and bomb makers and private contractors. But what has the American people achieved? Obviously, absolutely nothing. Hundreds of thousands of their young men, very fine young men, have been sacrificed by the military industrial complex of the US empire. And there is no end to this war now. So where do the Americans go from here? You know, Mr. Orangehead, when he pulled out of the peace talks, he it was very flimsy excuse because he said the Taliban have attacked and, and killed an American soldier. While all the time, when the last few years, when the negotiations were going on, of course they were not, they didn't start six months ago, the, the, the process has been going on for many years. The war has been going on in Afghanistan. The Taliban have been attacking the Americans and Americans in, in return have been attacking the Taliban. So this excuse is unsustainable. That just because of an attack, Americans are pulling out of the Afghan peace process. So where do the Americans go from here? Point is, they only have three options. They have seen it's been 18 years of war. They have not gone anywhere. Their war never had any termination strategy. They came for Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda has finished a long time ago. They came to topple the government of Mullah Umar. That government has been toppled, but now has come back with vengeance. And... Taliban are running over district after district every week and very soon you'll find them on the gates of Kabul exactly at the same place where they were in 1996 just before they took Kabul actually. So where do the Americans go from here and what are the consequences and fallout for Pakistan and the region at large? See the problem is that Americans have no choice here. If they want a face saving exit, they will have to come back and talk to Taliban. To try to form some kind of government in Kabul in which the allies of the Americans today who sit in the Kabul today and the opposition and the resistance which is the Afghan Taliban can sort of coexist. The second option which the Americans have is to invest more money, more men, more material more war equipment into this war and prolong it for another decade. And the third option that the Americans have is to call in a third power to replace them in Afghanistan and do the dirty work to clean up the dirty mess that the Americans have left. And for that, they are negotiating with India right now. And India has been asked, but Indians of course are not Pakistanis. They are very hard bargainers. They are shoot negotiators and what the Indians are demanding in return is something that the Americans may find very difficult to give for example infinite supply of free weaponry and ammunition taking over of Pakistani Kashmir cutting a passage through northern Pakistan to Afghanistan so that my Indian logistics can go there and if Indians bring in something like two to three divisions of their army into Afghanistan and are willing to die for the Americans, Americans can be sure that Indians are going to extract a very heavy price for this adventure. So 
how the future would unfold, we don't know yet. But we definitely know one thing, as far as Pakistan is concerned, that if the Indians come into Afghanistan, that will be a very fair opportunity that we turn Afghanistan into a hunting ground for the Indian invading forces. Americans, Pakistan had, was some kind of reluctant, obviously. Pakistan had not been waging a war against the Americans, despite the acquisitions. The Americans have not lost in Afghanistan because of Pakistan. Pakistan have been supplying the air bridge and the land routes to the NATO and Kabul regime and American forces, almost a million containers of supplies and equipment have gone inside. Not a single container of weapon, equipment and supplies have been given to Afghan Taliban by Pakistan. Afghan Taliban do not run any training areas or base camps in Pakistan. They don't have any refuge or safe areas here. This boogie of Haqqani network and Koita Shura is all bogus fraud. You don't defeat a superpower because of an hypothetical consultation council living in Quetta or in Pakistani tribal areas. To wage a war, you need a logistics, supplies, manpower, base areas like we had against the Soviet Union in the 80s. Hundreds of thousands of trucks of weapon, equipment and supplies were sent in from Pakistan into Afghanistan at that time to defeat the Soviets. No such thing is happening as far as Afghan Taliban are concerned. Yes, American logistics are still on. American air bridge is still there. So if Pakistan has been supporting anyone, it is the Americans Pakistan have been supporting in the Kabul regime, not the Afghan Taliban. So this allegation is obviously ridiculously rubbish. And when Americans actually put an allegation on Pakistan that Pakistan is responsible for their defeat, we take it as an offense. So as far as Pakistan is concerned, the cost that we have suffered because of our alliance with the Americans is indeed staggering much more than what the Americans have suffered. $120 billion in economic losses. The entire Pakistan was turned into a battlefield through terrorism. We have lost over 100,000 people, almost 10,000 soldiers and troops killed in action. And this is the cost that we paid for our alliance with the Americans. And this is something that Pakistan has to very seriously consider now that are we going to allow the Americans to continue with the turmoil and chaos in Afghanistan so that the terrorist groups created by the CIA and Indian ROC continue to exist and flourish in Afghanistan to wage a permanent war of terror against Pakistan. Should we allow that? Or should Pakistan seriously get involved into Afghanistan. So far our reaction, so far we are passive. So far the Pakistan has not been, Pakistan has recognized the Kabul regime, Pakistan is cooperating with the Americans. We are not recognizing Afghan Taliban as a legitimate party even though the Russians, Chinese, Qataris, Turkish, Americans, every country is accepting and talking to them and accepting them as a legitimate party in a war in Afghanistan except Pakistan. So. What should Pakistan do now, especially now when the Americans have pulled out of the peace talks? Where should we hedge our bets? And the only option that Pakistan has now is to get fully involved in Afghanistan. Warn the Americans that if the Indians are brought into Afghanistan, Pakistan will go full bore against the Indian forces. Because if we may have some inhibitions against the Americans, we have no such limitations against the Indians. And if Americans try to cut a deal with India, which goes against the interests of Pakistan, like giving India access to political, diplomatic, military support, or giving them diplomatic support to capture Pakistani Kashmir, then Pakistan would respond in ways most appropriate for our national interest, which I don't have to repeat. I don't have to say or, or go into their details, but the appropriate response would be visible when it comes. The fact is that Pakistan should now openly accept Afghan Taliban as a legitimate party in the war. Allow them to have an office in Islamabad, just like Kabul has an embassy in Islamabad. And Pakistan should very seriously get involved, openly, not covertly, openly, into deciding what is in the best interest of Pakistan. For the last 18 years, we have been taking the beating. We have only been responding or reacting to demands of the Americans or the changing situation on ground. We have never proactive. We never went into Afghanistan 
to create a buffer zone to protect ourselves. In fact, instead, we developed again a reactive policy of fencing the border, which of course is hurting the Afghan Taliban as well and the refugees and even the flora and fauna and the animals who live on both sides of the border. That is not a solution. Fencing is not a solution, as we say, when a dog falls into a well. You cannot clean the well unless you take the dog out first. Pulling out the buckets of water is never going to clean the well. What Pakistanis have been doing is they've been trying to pull out the buckets of water while the American dog is still in Afghanistan. And now it probably is going to be replaced by the Indian swines as well. So if that's the process, then of course, as I said, all bets are off and all wild cards will come into operation. We will not know how the Islamic environment and the geopolitical situation in the region is going to turn out because all the countries and especially Pakistan is going to respond as we seem fit without taking the permission or dictation from the Americans and certainly not the Indians. See you next time. This is Brass Tax.